Hey, Mark from Sound Matters here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about why it's a good idea to get a specific mono cartridge to play back your favorite mono records. So if you head over to the website, yoursoundmatters.com, I'll put a link directly to this article in the description, but you can delve into this topic in a little bit more detail than I will in this video in your own time. But I'm just going to give an overview of this topic. So up until the 1950s, all music was mixed in mono, and then even then, it wasn't until the late 1960s where stereo really started to take off and become kind of the mainstream. So there was this kind of transition period, right? And what that resulted in is some interesting variations of songs. So very often you'd have the mono version of a record and the stereo version of the record. And like any gizmo or anything new that's around at the time, you know, uh, it kind of gets done to death when it's new. So producers kind of really played with the fact that they could pan things from one side to the other and create stereo effects so that results in the mono version very often sounding quite different to the stereo version because of that extreme differences in how they were mixing things and playing with the new technology so a really good example that you can go and listen to in your own time over here is Pink Floyd's Interstellar Overdrive so if you listen to the outro on the mono version it's a you know a really natural dynamic lift on the opening riff whereas the stereo version is probably one of the most extreme you know psychedelic stereo panning effects you'll hear on a 1960s record but both outros are very very different and a lot of the time the mono versions of these mixes there are plenty of examples from the Beatles you know through to Pink Floyd and various other bands at the time where the stereo mono versions were very different indeed but very often these mono mixes have kind of been lost in history unless you've got a copy of the mono record so it's good to be able to play these and although you can play a stereo or rather you can play a mono record using a stereo cartridge it is highly beneficial sound quality wise and performance wise to have a specific cartridge capable of focusing purely on mono or one that's designed specifically for playing back mono records what we call a true mono cartridge so if a modern stereo cartridge could play back a an old school mono record why would we bother with a specific true mono cartridge to play back mono recordings well to understand that we need to kind of to see what the benefit is we need to understand the difference between a stereo and a mono record groove and i'm going to give as simple an explanation as i can on this and you can head over to the article for something more in depth if you would like so in a nutshell mono records contain only lateral cut grooves so there's no vertical component to them whatsoever there's only one signal and essentially you've got a groove that goes wiggles from side to side so like this this diagram that you can see here this is a mono groove you can see it, it wiggles from side to side over here we have a stereo groove which is very different altogether so a stereo groove contains a separate left and right channel information and that's on each groove wall and that those are cut at a 45 degree angle from each other right so the groove is much more complicated shape and it contains both lateral and vertical information so you can see here that's a much more complex groove here that's been cut this is one channel here and this is another channel on the other side and both contain up and down and side to side information that is in a nutshell the difference between them this is a far more complicated groove to cut and a far more complicated groove actually to track right so there's a few reasons why a stereo cartridge won't produce as good a result as something like a true mono cartridge like this one the autophon 2m mono that i'm going to go into a little bit more detail later on in this video so the main reason is that a stereo cartridge can never produce exactly the same signal in the left and right channel there will always be slight discrepancies between each of those which results in things like crosstalk phase errors phase cancellation that kind of thing right so you end up with some frequencies kind of overlapping others and cancelling each other you get less of a focus sound and kind of more of a washed out sound you don't get quite the same punch as a result of that that you would get with a mono cartridge because a mono cartridge overcomes those problems by only producing one signal it's just tracking that single groove and producing a single a singular sig signal that will be then distributed to the left and right channels in a modern day stereo system that's fundamental reason number one the second reason and this is quite a big one as well actually is that 
you can actually reduce the response to sort of dirt and dust. And some of this has to do with the, you know, the stylus profile, but it also has something to do with the fact that the vertical element isn't being tracked in the same way. So um, a lot of dust that may be picked up by that vertical tracking response from a stereo cartridge is perhaps missed and not processed in the same way as it would be with a mono cartridge because you're just going from side to side. So it can, in many circumstances, result in the cleaner reproduction of a mono record, which is which is a great advantage. So I've just finished reviewing this, which is the Autophon 2M Mono, which is the same cartridge I held up earlier, this little guy here. It's a true mono cartridge, so optimal for playing mono records, as I've described, in terms of you know delivering the same output from both pole pins. So um, they call that a strapped output, which ensures the same output from both, um, both pole pins here. It, the stylus is optimal for playing most micro mono groove records in terms of the size and profile. And I recommend you go over to yoursoundmatters.com. I put the link in the description below for the full review. And there's, there's an audio sample. There's an audio sample of me playing back this original pressing of The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night. And so I've played a little sample clip of it played with a stereo cartridge, followed by the 2M Mono, this cartridge here, so that you can hear how it does sound punchier, it sounds more focused, it sounds cleaner, less distorted, less washy. It really brings out the qualities of a mono recording that's been mixed and mastered well. And to me, it's a pretty night and day difference, so I recommend you go and listen to it. It's difficult for me to play these things on YouTube because of copyright um, elements in terms of YouTube is pretty hot on automatically picking up anybody else's music and either removing it or, or stopping the video from going forward altogether. Sometimes it will get through, but it's very touch and go. So it's best you just head to the link below if you want to hear the before and after samples as to what switching over to a true mono cartridge really does. Um, another nice aspect about this cartridge is that it is also compatible with their 78 stylus so the gray this gray stylus here uh, one of the great things about the autophon 2m range in general is a lot of the a lot of the cartridges are interchangeable with different styli so here it says up here so the 2m red and 2m blue and 2m silver are all interchangeable with the body so the body remains the same you just swap out for the new stylus we've done a review about the difference between the 2m red and the 2m blue again over at yoursoundmatters.com you can switch between the 2m bronze and the 2m black and as i've just alluded to you can switch between the 2m mono which is the white stylus that's installed on there at the moment on this head shell and this gray one here which is specifically for playing 78 rpm records so they have much wider groove 78 rpm records and they do need a slightly bigger styli in order to track those properly and not you know have a horrendous performance and also potentially damage your styli so really cool and one of the great things about the um, playing 78 is that they're just such great bits of history so i picked up a, a copy of this record here which is i'll slide it out of the sleeve very gently because it's very old but uh little richard tutti fruity so what a lovely piece of music history this um, 78 rpm shellac record here and i'll be very gentle to pull it out um because they can be quite brittle shellac records they can quite easily break but as you can see here it's a lovely 78 rpm record here uh that is yeah just a lovely little piece of history i absolutely love it um so you can quickly and easily swap out for the 78 stylus and keep the body of the mono cartridge exactly the same which again i think is just a, a lovely touch there in terms of being able to explore another world of music it just opens your potential out to um a treasure trove shall we call it of musical gems out there and so i can now start to build a little collection of 78s and i do feel you know with the, how old some of these pieces are you know like you, you become like the custodian of the record you know and i think that's a really wonderful thing thing so yeah there's a world of mono to be explored out there so i do recommend you head over to the website and give a listen to the before and after samples of uh, that beatles recording just to get the idea here you can see here there's a couple of samples just a, you know, a couple just slightly under a minute sample so that you can hear the difference between that stereo cartridge and the mono cartridge and the performance uplift that you get there's
there's a whole world of mono to explore out there i recommend you get to exploring and start to really um find out what mono can all be about i mean sometimes i think we we view stereo as being this superior thing which you know obviously has many advantages but mono recordings when done right can sound really punchy and really focused um because they're much easier recordings to track in terms of the groove and you know many advantages there and they, they have a charm all of their own right and Again, as I alluded to, it's like a little piece of music history. So lots to explore there with the world of mono. I recommend you get stuck in. That's all we got time for today. So if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Head over to YourSoundMatters.com and check out the link below for audio clips related to this topic. So to hear before and after samples of the Beatles record I showed at the beginning of this clip. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for watching.